Hey, what's up everybody? I'm at the Battery here in Charleston, South Carolina. It is bright and sunny, humid and hot, but with a beautiful, beautiful breeze. You can see behind me, they have the boat races getting going there, sailboats, things like that. Over here, we've got really beautiful walkway, buildings, lots of tourists are out today. I've been out here one time before. I've got to hold the microphone to my mouth because I lost my lapel clippy thingy. So bear with me there. So I've had one session out here already, but it was a different time of the day. I like the composition, but I don't like the feeling of the painting. And what I mean by that is that the painting, as I made it, it just felt safe. It felt like I wasn't even present while making it. Uh, and I really, really don't like it when it happens. So I'm out today to just really essentially mess it up and, uh, and just shake things up and see what happens. And then I'm gonna show you what it looks like after today's session. And we'll talk about that just a little bit before we get into the painting analysis. Now this is the painting after today's session. This reflects its most recent state. I'm much more excited about this painting and I, I can really sense like the energy of its potential. So here's a little bit of a back and forth comparison for you between the two paintings. That being said, it still has a long way to go, and I suspect it may be completely different in the end. Pierre Augusto Renoir a French Impressionist painter who was born in 1841. He was friends with painters like Alfred Sisley, Claude Monet. Renoir has not been an easy painter for me to like. It's taken me quite a long time to come to terms with his work. Every time I've tried before, I would come up with the same conclusion that, okay, look, you know, he's, he's being overly sentimental. He's uh, idealizing his subjects. And it's only been recently that I've, I've come to terms with the real reason why I struggle with Renoir's work. And it's because I feel as though as the viewer, I am being asked to, to look at one thing that is being presented to me while being exposed to something completely different. You know, something that is felt more subconscious. And uh, that really bothers me. It makes me feel uneasy because I, I have difficulty trusting that. I'm like, what is Renoir really doing here? What is he really up to? It's easy to see Renoir as like the overly romantic painter who just sets up in the landscape to paint pretty flowers on a perfectly sunny day. But Renoir is not that kind of person. He projects that through his imagery. But the way that he structures the space in his paintings attack his subjects violently sometimes he disfigures his forms he he disfigures his forms while simultaneously idealizing them it's a very unsettling and disturbing coexistence in the work And, and that's what I'm wrestling with. Um, I am mystified by Renoir because he 
he's so strange. Okay, so what is the subject of this painting? We see from the title, The Umbrellas, that Renoir is making a painting about people using umbrellas. But is that really what this painting is about? What are the primary figures in this painting? We see a young woman to the left and a little girl to the right. But there is something really strange going on here. So let's take a look at this little girl. She seems to be in her own space, in a way where she's encapsulated. It's like she's removed from the people around her. She stands out. She stands out in a completely different way. The question is, why would Renoir paint this figure to do this? And look at the figure to the left of the girl. There's a woman there painted in such a way that she takes on a new form visually. This is something where Renoir separates his subject from the apparent reality by concealing that reality and fusing it into another reality. It's like he takes two different forms that are separate from each other and he integrates them in a really unsettling way, thereby causing that figure or that form to take on a new reality. This woman here is merging with the little girl and the figure to her left. She takes on that form in a space that is set behind the girl and behind that basket. It's really, really strange. Now, when he does this, the significance of that move implies that the blue behind that woman, which originally would be a part of her dress, is now the pants to the man behind her. Now get this, this man that I've outlined is not one man. It's two. It's the arm that belongs to one that's in front of the head of the figure behind it. But visually he paints it so it looks as though it's one figure with a small head and a ginormous arm and hand holding this umbrella. This is a very unsettling, startling visual experience. This is where Renoir gets really strange. And this is happening all over this painting. Look what happens to, to the little girl to the far right. Where is her neck? It's like he begins to chip away at the presence of these forms by causing bits and pieces of them to belong to something else. Now, I don't know if you've realized this yet, but look at the head of the young girl to the left. Have you noticed that her eyes don't quite line up? As you look at her face, you'll notice that the right eye is slightly higher than the left. This is not something that happened due to a lack of drawing ability on the part of Renoir. Renoir was trained academically, which means he had tons of exposure. I'm talking like thousands of hours of drawing classical studies, studying the masters. He's an incredible draftsman. He's doing this on purpose. If you look at the way that the arm is divided into two different colors, how that lines up with the movement of the head and the opening of that umbrella behind her, you'll notice that together that creates a field of space which is set behind the woman 
who is behind the girl, but moves up to share the spatial location of the head of the woman who is in the very front of the painting. So what this implies is a field of space that simultaneously shares two very different spatial locations. Now, let's get back to that umbrella that's starting to open. Now, if you look at the thrust of that diagonal movement as she's sliding the umbrella open, now one, one could say that she's closing the umbrella. She's taking it down like the sun's coming out, you know. But I don't think that's what's happening, and I'll tell you why. I believe that what's happening is that she is opening the umbrella, but the thrust is towards the young woman's head to the left. And that diagonal thrust, while the umbrella is opening, take a look at her hands. Picture this, okay? Her hands are sliding up the shaft of the umbrella, all right? Now, as they slide up, the umbrella opens, causing the right side of that woman's face to move. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you, do you see the implication of that movement? Why would Renoir do something so strange? Okay. The next is it's just a series of directional movements that occur through the folds of the fabric of this young woman. But this is pretty cool. Like you notice how he's creating volumetric effect, this sort of turning this through this cylindrical movement of, of her dress, you know, which obviously is moving around her lower her upper to lower torso. So look at that for a moment, look what that implies. And this also helps to, of course, direct the movement of the eye. Now, the gentleman to the far left, which is set just behind this woman, if you notice that his umbrella is actually set pretty far back in his space, his umbrella is, is further back behind the umbrella that belongs to the woman that is behind the little girl. Although, this young man is closer to us than where the woman behind the girl is. Although, the spatial location of the umbrellas are completely switched. Now the way that he painted the man to the left is actually setting him back pretty far when compared to the woman on the right, the woman behind the little girl. It's really, really bizarre. He belongs to the space where the trees are. The, the way that Renoir painted this, this gentleman through the umbrella and through the mid-tone range there in his clothes and, and even just the color that he's using sets him closer to the trees. Now the umbrella, it's in the very, very far back. I don't mean the one furthest from us. I just mean the one that's furthest back in the painting. The one that's sort of beginning to tilt toward us. We can see the top of the umbrella tilting toward us. Right, that space relates to the head of the woman, the young woman who is closest to us. In other words, as we move back into the painting, the tilt of that umbrella moves our gaze back to the woman. It relates to the woman, the figure in the front, okay? So that's where those arrows are coming from. Now, let's take a look at the ground plane, which is very bizarre. You have three different planar shifts on the ground. Between the, between the two women, the one closest to us, the young woman, and then the woman who is behind the child, let's call her mother, between those two figures, the ground is tilted askew as you can see here on the diagonal, right? That's not too crazy. But as it moves to the front, the ground goes almost vertical. Do you see that? You see how it moves, it just drops off. But then it's picked up again when we move to the right to where the, the rightmost foot is in the bottom of the painting, belonging to this girl that is now disappearing. Do you see how the ground completely changes there? The structure of the ground, it's like it's there and then it's not there and then it's there again. It is something that Renoir does a lot in his paintings. He does it even with his figures, it's like, he allows the form to exist as it would in nature, but then completely negates that existence, only to reinstate it by 
merging it with some other form and some other spatial location. And he does it in a way that is so strange, so unexpected and bizarre, it's really unsettling. And as a final note, look at the directional movement that Renoir creates through the axes of the umbrellas and how they connect visually up and around and behind the figures. There's something really interesting about this, this movement. If it starts in the far right and you go up through the umbrellas and down through and behind the head of this woman to her hand and then from her hand to the hands of the figure right next to her who is sort of pushing us, pushing our gaze through the head of the young woman to the left to the, the young man, to his broom handle, around the front of her torso, to the basket, to the handle of the basket, and how that moves us to this little stick that the girl is holding. Okay. What is that all about? That's, that's it's a really puzzling thing. What is that about? It's really, really bizarre. There are more things that are happening in this painting, too. Like, if you look at the fabric of the woman's dress to the figure on the figure to the left, you'll notice that where the hands line up, it's like she's pulling that part of the dress closer to us. So it's you can see it how it's sort of disjointing itself. It's disconnecting itself from the rest of her body. And it's, it's sort of pushing that space to us it's like she's lifting it to us like hey pass me a towel that kind of thing it's really bizarre but Renoir does this again and again and if you take time to really look at this painting there are even more bizarre things happening this is a very unsettling painting spend some time with it see what you find Hope you enjoyed looking at Renoir. He's a crazy guy. The more time I spend with his work, the more alluring and mystifying he becomes. I have a lot to learn from Renoir. And uh, I want to thank those special people who've challenged me to um, look at his work with more consideration and more care and with more humility than what comes natural to me. If you got something from today's video, please subscribe. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below and let me know which painter or painting you would like to see analyzed for next week. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.